Welcome to How Preschool Teachers Do It. This is Allison Kentos. I am an early childhood educator. And this is Cindy Tarabush. I am an early childhood consultant. This podcast is for parents and early childhood professionals. Let our experience and research-based knowledge become your guide. Hi, preschool peeps. Hi, peeps. Welcome to our Food Fears episode. Uh. <laughs> we've, yes. we've talked about food and nutrition in other episodes, but I read something recently and I was like, aha, I want to share this with Allison <laughs> and the preschool peeps because it was yeah. so interesting. I read this thing about why young children have fears about trying new food that I thought was amazing to think about really. And so I offer it to you all for when you have children in your life or in your program who seem really afraid to try new food. What I learned was that it is actually part of the human instinct to be afraid of new food, which served us well when we were primitive people just out in the jungle or the forest, having to forage for food um, and yeah. finding plants and wild animals and having a fear of new served us well because we were less apt to do things like eat poison berries. Yeah, makes sense, right? It's like survival. It's a survival instinct, right? You don't want to eat a poison berry and then die, <laughs> you know? So you got to go with what you know. So makes sense. Right, right. So we have a yeah. natural instinct, apparently, to be afraid of new food, um, which, again, it makes perfect sense when you think of it in the context of having to gather and hunt for your food. Mm -hmm. It sort of reminds me of how we have an appendix that we don't really need, but it served it people. <laughs> yes. Right. It, it yeah. served people back in the day somehow. I forget how. I once read how. But I don't remember how either. But I don't yeah, remember, but it was an important, an important <laughs> organ once. Yeah. Our bodies still have it, but we don't really need it. And so that's why they can yeah. so easily remove the appendix and not worry about it. Yeah. It's kind of like this. The, the fear of food served us well once. It may still if you have spoiled milk in your refrigerator, but the, the right. fear of, of new food um, now isn't as... Um, necessary as when people were gathering and hunting for their own food back then. We still have the instinct though, and children are born with it. Right. So what we're basically asking them to do, many children, when we ask them to try new food, is to fight against their basic instinct to be afraid of it. Yeah. See, that makes so much sense though. And really like, if I think back to my childhood, like I was always kind of like that picky eater that didn't want to try new things. And I'm still like that as an adult. I will just stick with what I know and very rarely deviate because to me, it's like, all right, it's food. It fills me up. It serves its purpose. We're done. You know what I mean? Like it's not. And I think maybe, maybe I should push myself a little bit, but why? <laughs> you know, why? You know I, I, I hear what you're saying though. Like my, my, one of my sons in particular loves all different sorts of ethnic foods, not just his okay. own ethnicity, like all yeah. sorts of ethnic foods that are so easy in the area where we live in the country. So easy to find yeah. places that serve food from many, many, many different cultures. And he is far more apt to go and try that food than yeah. I am. I'm, I'm sort of like, yeah. take me to the, the, the typical, uh, American style. Yeah. Occasionally <laughs> I will depart from American style, but I'm very much like, take me to the typical American style place and I'll find yeah. something on that menu. And I have a fear of not finding things that I, I can or would be willing to too. eat in the other places. Yes. Right. Yes. So I, I guess some of the, some of the fear stays with you in different ways. Yeah. Very interestingly, according to this research, what it said was that if you, it takes, because of that fear, it takes children about five to 10 times of being exposed to a new food to be willing to try it. So we can okay. have that's it there long, and we can put lot. it out in front of them. It's a lot because it's I'm not going to show them the same food every day. I'm not like right. mommy dearest could, saying, put the plate back in front of her. <laughs> I'm not doing yeah, that. No, this could take, this could take months, right? Because <laughs> like, 
<laughs> you know? And like, and that's like five to 10, 10, say you do it once a week for, that's 10 weeks. That's more than two months. You know? Yeah. And that's so if you say, are willing to say, buy the same food, knowing that they're not going to eat it, <laughs> you know? But that you want to put it out in front of them, model right. eating, eating it, offer them yes. the opportunity, right? Yes. So it yes. does take work and it can take a lot of time. Cause like I said, I'm not bringing the same plate out every day and sticking it Bring in front of the kid like some day. kind of punishment. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so yeah. Uh, that that's over a span of time, five to 10 times of exposure before they may be willing to try it. That's just an average. Could be less, yeah. could be more depending on the temperament right. of the child and the situation that we set up. If after that five to 10 attempts, adults get frustrated and they start to say things like, you have to take three bites of that. You have to take five bites of that. You have to eat some of that. We actually cause an adversity to that food that will last the children a lifetime. We can probably all think of food that we have that adversity to where mm -hmm. I'm just like, it makes me want to gag because people made me eat it. For me, that's broccoli. I can't, I know people love it. I, I fully acknowledge that you all may love it, preschool peeps. I cannot bear the smell, the texture, the taste of broccoli. And I think that goes back from the old, you must eat what's on your plate thing. Yeah. See, for me, it's mushrooms, but it happened I when I was mushrooms. older. I know. Ah. And it happened when I was older because my, my, Mom never really forced me to eat anything. You don't like it? Fine. I'll make what you like kind of thing, which was Wow. You probably... had a really nice mom. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> but I don't think that was necessarily the good thing either because then it got me into what I am now, which is I'll only eat what I eat. You know what I mean? Because she never really even mm. attempted to get me to eat different things. There was no, it was like, you want chicken nuggets here? Have chicken nuggets. Because my, my dad worked nights and it was just her. So for, uh, I think she was like, okay, that's easy. I'll make what I like and I'll make you guys what you like. And I don't care as long as you eat kind of thing. But I don't remember ever really eating vegetables or anything until I was older. When I was older, much older, my one of my ex-boyfriends loved mushrooms and would force it into like foods that he made me. And I don't like oh. mushrooms. And he forced basically like, which make me eat these mushrooms. And now, even though I don't mind the taste of them, I just refuse to eat them. <laughs> you know? I will not eat them. Okay. Yeah. I think when and you're sneaky about because the food, of that. that isn't so good either. And people do get yeah. sneaky about the food. They're like, I'm going to, I'm going to yes. like shove some vegetable in this. And it, uh, it may not be the yeah. best way because they, they could become no. adults who don't want to eat it then either. Well, and I also think like if you're sneaking it in, say you're sneaking it in, like there's different ways to sneak in vegetables into people's food. They don't even realize they're eating it, right? So then when they're older, they're like, no, I don't like carrots, even though they've been eating carrots for a decade because their parents have been sneaking it in, <laughs> but they don't know it. <laughs> so they're like, no, I don't eat carrots. I don't like carrots or whatever it might be, you know, but they have, been. <laughs> you know, so no, I don't I'm, think that's I'm, the I'm, right I'm way like to go this. about it either. <laughs> I'm always trying to get credit for vegetables. I'm the opposite. I'm always like, well, I mean, I had ketchup. That's tomato. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that. Sweet. I've done that. I was like, well, what? French fries. Those are, those are potatoes. I mean, that's good. A potato. That's right a there. starchy yeah. thing though. You don't want, I, no, I, I definitely, starchy, but it's still I definitely try to vegetable. take credit. <laughs> okay. But I yeah. try to take credit for things that I really should not be taking credit for. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, no, I've definitely done done that. You throw that a piece too. of lettuce, throw a piece of lettuce on my burger, and I'm like, had a salad. Yep. Had a salad. <laughs> good. <laughs> I've definitely done that. I have to tell you, I have to tell you that I do work. I actually, in real life, actually seriously work with a nutritionist who's, who I hope isn't listening to this. It would be like, did she tell me she had a salad and it was a piece of lettuce on a burger? No, I'm not lying to you. And that's, it's a joke. It's a joke. I know when I'm eating a salad when I'm not, well, but I, I, they're also, they're, the I do whole, try to like, take credit for the ketchup. <laughs> yeah. But the whole sneaking vegetable thing in, okay. So I, through my insurance, I can sign up for like a health coach, which I did, which is online, whatever. And she'll send you different things. And one of the things is like, oh, you want to add more vegetables in? Here's how you can sneak them into your own food. And I'm like, 
wait, but how is it tricking myself if I have to prepare the food? I still know there's carrots in there, okay? No, I just don't want you to taste it. Like with kids, yes. where we think they won't taste yeah. it. It'll just be in yeah. there. It's just um, in there. One way to get them to try the new food is to have them help you prepare it. So yes. if I'm preparing their food and they see the vegetable going in and being mooshed in there, I would imagine yes. then they understand that yeah. they're eating it. You really should have them help you prepare. That's one way to get through that sure. barrier of yeah. fear because then yeah. they have helped you to manipulate it, to create it, and they're yeah. proud of their creation. They're more likely to eat it. So that's yeah. one way past the fear. Another way is to give them the time and space without trying mm -hmm. to force it. Because the more you know with children, the more you try to force something, the more they will run in the opposite direction. And we don't want yeah, that. We don't want that. I do think it's so helpful, though, to understand that this is a primal instinct to be afraid yeah. of new food. It's not the child is picky. The child is stubborn. The child is afraid of everything. The child... No, it's their natural inborn instinct well, to not I've... eat the poison berries in the forest when the they're forest. foraging. Which I have to say that when you texted me today saying that you wanted this to be the topic for today, I instantly was like, oh, I'm not weird. That was the, and I'm old. Okay. So, like, so I was like, oh, it's my instinct. I'm like, I'm not just a, because for my whole life I heard, you're just a picky eater and blah, blah, blah. I heard that my whole life. And I'm like, I don't care if I just eat the same thing every day. It doesn't bother me. It's just, it gets me my nutrition and I'm done. Like. But when you said that, I was like, oh, see, I'm normal. This is normal. <laughs> I just don't see fight that? against it as much as maybe other people do. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. I think we also have to recognize that for some children, it could be a sensory thing. Some foods mm -hmm. don't feel good to them in yeah. their mouths. There are definitely me, foods I'm that like I won't eat because mushy, of how it feels. Mushy food. I don't like yeah. mushy food. I, that's why I don't like fruit that much. It's too mushy, you know? And so I don't eat a lot of fruit <laughs> you know like and the fruit i do eat is yeah no it's not a good thing but it's it's a consistency thing for me i don't like the texture i don't like the consistency well i can't so. eat like cottage cheese and oatmeal i don't like that consistency yep, yep. so I'm, I'm with you there you know, on it that can one. be <laughs> can be sensory and that's something that we, you know it's important to figure out and kind of respect um it can be the smell of it um, mm -hmm. It can be anything having to do with the senses. So there are a variety of reasons why children will avoid food. Uh, and, and I think one of the most important lessons from what I read today was the more you force it, the more likely they're to yeah. have, they are to have a lifelong aversion to it. And I bet yeah. our preschool peeps can think of things that they were forced to eat that they now will avoid at all costs. Yes. <laughs> Right? Like, I, there's no way I'm putting that food in my mouth. And it may stem back to your early childhood. If you're not sure, folks, if you can think of a food that you absolutely 100% will not eat, and it's not because of some sort of moral conviction, it's just you can't <laughs> bear the thought of putting this food in your mouth, even though you would be willing to eat it, generally yeah. speaking, um, yeah. go back to your family, if you have them, if you can, and say to them, did you ever try and force me to eat this? Because I I can't even look at it now. I can't bear it. Yeah. I won't eat it. I'm wondering yeah. if it's something you tried to force me to eat because of what research is showing. And if I, I have to tell you that if I went back to my own mother and said, you know, it's because you forced me to X, Y, Z, she would be like, well, we didn't know. We didn't know not to do that. <laughs> we didn't know. <laughs> right. So here I am telling you folks, don't do that. Don't force yeah. them. Yeah. We don't in any way force feed children in early childhood. It's bad for them psychologically. It's yeah. bad emotionally. It's just bad. And so in policies, there should be policies that say we don't force feed children. There are reasons for this that impact them for their whole lives. Yeah. And, yeah. and even though you may be thinking, well, I'm just wanting them to take, th I hate that three bite rule that people have. You must yeah, take three, three bites. bites. That's yeah. force feeding children. That's what you're doing. You're doing what we're not allowed to do. I can't stand that whole, you must take three bites. What I'm doing is I'm causing an aversion quite, to the food. Yeah, I don't even quite understand the whole three bites thing. Like I, I encourage like, 
yeah, like at, at school, the children get meals, right? And I will encourage them to try the things. And if they try it, even if it's just like one bite and they tried it, I praise them to yeah for everything. But then if they don't want to try it, I'm like, it's okay. You'll try it maybe next okay. time we have it, you know, or you won't. You know what I mean? But like, it's... But and if then your children... forcing them to say three bites is like, that's a lot. Yeah, I don't get it. I don't know where that it. started. It's, it's, yeah. I'm going to just file that under the many things that I don't know how it started, but it's not great. Mm, yeah, we should probably do an great. episode of, I don't know how it started, but it's not great for Patreon, <laughs> for, like for our too. Patreon peeps. Um, yeah. And if you're wondering how to get that bonus content, go to patreon.com backslash how preschool teachers do it. And you'll see that for only $5 a month, they're going to be listening to an episode about the things that we don't know how it started and it's not great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, th- and this is one of them. One. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so okay. I hope you'll keep in mind after this episode that when you see children who are afraid of new foods, it's okay. And you, we all know adults who grow up who don't like eating much fruit or much vegetables and they take vitamin supplements. That's what happens. Just, it isn't, you don't, yeah, it's not a big deal. They end up <laughs> like me yeah. talking to a nutritionist who says things like, can we cut back on the meat and add more vegetable on that plate can we do that could we How do you feel yes. about that? yeah are we going to no <laughs> <laughs> no one contact my nutritionist <laughs> yeah <laughs> They'll figure out a way, you know, I'm always telling people about a variety of things, including eating, behavior, toilet training, all these things. They're going to grow up anyway. It isn't going to be like yeah. this forever. And they'll figure out a path yeah. for yeah. them. Yeah. We uh, So the more, just like everything else, the more you force, the worse it is for them. It's a natural instinct. And we don't want to set up a lifelong aversion. Yeah. Okay. I hope this gave a lot of people things to think about in your approach to children and when you, how you react to them when they don't want to try the new food. I'll tell you who does not have an aversion, though. There are two places who, that do not have an aversion to this podcast. I keep trying to get these segues in. How am I doing? I Thank love you. it. That was a good one. Thank you very much. <laughs> I try. Thank you. Yeah. In the tops of our ratings this week is El Salvador. Ooh. I don't think we've ever shouted out El Salvador before. I don't before. think we ever have. Ever and, have. and the great state of Indiana. Oh, Indiana. Hi. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm, I don't, I, I could be wrong here, but I don't think we've said Indiana either. No. I think that's a new one in our top ratings. That is. I know somebody who just moved to Indiana. Oh, they're so telling everyone. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's her. She's out there telling everybody. Everybody. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, Allison's thank you. friend in Indiana. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so very much. Yes. Okay, folks. Start to look at the children and the food a little differently. And mm-hmm. uh, remember, it's a natural instinct. And we will see you here next week on Patreon. Mm-hmm. And we'll have a whole new topic then. Yeah. Bye, Bye, peeps. peeps.